right away. There's quite a few questions, so I want to make sure to get at least half of them. Uh, you can still ask the questions if you have any, and I will, I will do as much as I can. Uh, I just thought I'd share, I recently found out I'm allergic to gluten, which I believe was a big trigger with my skin picking and pulling. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we were talking about that actually in one of the support groups this week, uh, about how for certain people, changing the way they eat can significantly impact not just what their skin looks like, because gluten, for example, can cause, uh, if you actually have allergy to gluten, so no, not just that you're sensitive to it, but an actual allergy, it can cause skin changes that you might be tempted to pick. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, we, we talked about other things like sugar, uh, caffeine intake. There are no studies and it works for some people, doesn't work for some people, but it definitely is worth uh, experimenting on. I would just add one thing. Um, every effort you make to make your skin look better or smoother or cleaner or whatever your goal is, that's fine. It's good for your skin. It's good for your, it's good to reduce the triggers. But the trick with picking is never in what your skin is like. It's more in your expectations of what your skin is like. So this is a good path to take because it is obviously reducing your picking and pulling. So by all means, continue. And if you're allergic, you know, you should avoid gluten for all kinds of other reasons but still try to address the expectations that you have. What kind of skin do you think you must have or that you should have? Because this is the psychological component that simply won't go away by removing certain types of food from your, from your diet. So that's just something that's important to remember because otherwise um, we can't quite control what our skin looks like and it can break out for no apparent reason sometimes. Stress can, can cause acne sometimes, or at least a flare up. So in that sense, the psychological thing to resolve still, still remains primary, even though this will be, I, I assume and anticipate, it will be a wonderful boost to your confidence. So other people might consider that as well. What are your thoughts on NAC or NAC? Um, but I don't have too many thoughts on it. Like give it a try and then see if it works. Uh, it helps about half of the people half of the time. So you reduce your, it, it's supposed to reduce the urges by about 48%, I think, in, in more or less 12 weeks. So that's three months. Uh, it's, a, it's a, something you can buy over the counter. It's not very toxic. You can freely use it and you can, even increase the dosage by quite a lot. So if you can afford it for at least three months, it's perfectly okay to try. Just don't start, that's a suggestion, something that I've realized from my other clients. Don't start with a very high dose. Start, start, start with something like 600 milligrams, take that for a few days, then increase a little bit or double it because it might cause some stomach problems like gas or even diarrhea. So you know, if you can avoid that, that that's a plus. So it's it's worth worth a try, definitely. But I don't think that alone is going to resolve the problem. Uh, why did the war lady's yellow dress fall down from the top? <laughs> well, that is a good question, but I think it should be directed to the painter who was Eugène Delacroix, the French romantic painter. I don't know. Good question, though. I will do some research and let you know. I didn't notice at all that there was nudity on it because I don't know when you look at art, everyone's naked all the time. I hope that wasn't a problem for anyone. Um, if it is, I will, I don't know, try to use images with people with their clothes on. So no, no neoclassical or romantic paintings or impressionist paintings. Um, thank you for the reminder about being realistic and decreasing expectations. Yeah, this is really important. I've seen people drop out of therapy because of their expectations and, or not even just expectations, but also how they approach change based on those expectations. Like I should be able to stop right now and never pick again. 
I, 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 there was, um, I've had a few clients over the past few years who had very strong opinions about sort of how much they should reduce their picking. Like one client came with the idea that she should just stop picking tomorrow and not start ever again. Then another client said, I should be allowed to pick only one day per week. And then I thought, but how does one decide something like that? Like, how, what do you do? You say, I will pick for 20 minutes on Wednesday afternoons. It didn't, to me, it didn't seem very realistic. And then they would get a little bit upset when I would share my feedback with them. But in both of those situations, it proved that what I was saying did make sense. So always think about decreasing by a little bit. So think 10% less per week. And then adjust that with by with stress levels in some way. So that's something that that's usually the way that I like to approach it because 10% is not that much when you think about it. So it should be a doable change. But 10% every week means 80% less picking in two months, ideally. But let's say with life throwing, you know, wrenches every now and then you might get to 50, 60% in two months and 10% per week really isn't that much. So that's a sustainable way of doing things. Yeah, it, it's a real shame when, when, when the high expectations set you back. Uh, uh, this reminds me of weight loss in the plateau. A person wants to weigh less but also loves potato chips and lapses to use the picking language and devours an entire bag of chips um, or an entire pan of chocolate brownies. Yeah, exactly. That, that, is, that is actually quite a good way of looking at it. Yeah, because when it comes to weight loss, I mean, that's obviously not something that I, I mean, I have clients who talk about their body issues all the time, but I'm not a dietitian. I don't know much about that, but yes. I know that there is this, it, I think mostly like everything we do, like I like languages a lot and I like learning new languages. And I know that there's like this point when you learn new languages, when you reach like the B level, like B1 or B2 maybe, when you reach this plateau where you're fluent enough, but you're not fully fluent. So you can go to the store, you can order what you want in a restaurant. Um, you can read the newspaper maybe, but if you pick up a poetry collection, you start crying because you can't understand anything. So for most, like you, you've achieved something, uh, you're comfortable enough. So it's not that you absolutely need urgently uh, to learn more. So you kind of lose the motivation to, to go further. It's very tempting to quit. Because as much as people like learning languages, they also like their free time and they also like to feel good about themselves. So they will choose, I don't know, to fall back on a language they already speak. I remember I had this issue when, when I was learning Spanish, which wasn't a choice, it was more of a necessity, but I was already fluent in Italian. And then I remember there was this point where I could just speak with people normally and I didn't have any problems understanding you know, instructions for something or like, I was able to just have these normal everyday conversations. And then I kind of decided, I remember standing in a bookstore, looking at a book in Italian and a book in Spanish and thinking, I'm just gonna get the Italian book because I really needed to feel validated. I needed to read a book and not have to use the dictionary, which would never happen with Spanish. So sometimes when we reach the plateau, we just choose what's easier, what's habitual, a bag of chips or a chocolate brownie, yeah. But when you know that this will happen, then you can do something to prevent it. Um, what's your recommendation to someone who has resumed more frequent picking after seeing a reduction through this program last year? I'm still continuing to meditate daily, which helps some, but picking is still a struggle. Uh, when it gets better, it's often because I fell into a different BFRB habit. Uh, so if you still meditate daily, you might want to change up your meditation routine a little bit. I don't know, you know, what kind of meditation you practice now, but you might want to extend how long you meditate. You might want to change the technique of meditation. And then also, how regular are you with using your competing responses? 
uh, when I have clients who come back or who email me, uh, also, by the way, if you finish this program, you can email whoever your therapist was uh, so they can look up your conversations and then maybe they can produce a more specific piece of advice than I can just off the bat like this. Um, but so maybe you can switch up your meditation practice that frequently helps. Uh, you can all make sure that you're using your competing responses regularly because I've noticed that when people uh, stop or at least significantly reduce their picking, they then get rid of competing responses too, which is uh, which is the wrong answer, just to put it simply. So you should make sure to continue to use your competing responses as habits and try, if you're experiencing a relapse, you might want to do some stimulus control, like wear gloves, all of these things to put like call it patches, all of these things to, to heal your skin as fast as you can, and then lay off the stimulus control and go back to competing responses. But as I said, I think because you've been through the program, it might be a good idea to email your therapist. If you don't have their email, you can uh, email me. You have my email here on the left. And either I can give you a more specific piece of advice or I can tell you what your therapist's email is and then they can, um, they can help you. You might also want to make a self-soothing kit. That could be quite useful. If only a competing response doesn't work, a self-soothing kit contains a bunch of stuff. Uh, so you can drop me an email and I will send you the instructions. Uh, tips for journaling to help cure skin picking. What should I journal and when and how often? Um, so I, this is a very big topic you're asking me about. So let me just give you at least some general instructions. So first we look at picking um, as having two components. One of them is the annoying habitual component, meaning that it's an ingrained habit. A journal can help you there other than, than to notice the patterns. So you should use the journal as a kind of self-monitoring device, or you can use the app for that as well. But then when you implement techniques to get rid of the habit, I don't think journaling can do much for you there. Where journaling really excels is understanding why you pick, uh, what the emotional background is behind picking, and what your basic assumptions are about how you change and who you want to actually be when you finish picking. So what I would, for example, some of the, some of the prompts that, um, that you could use is first uh, use the journal to understand your picking. So write about your history with picking in detail. Uh, write about your memories, like every significant episode that you can think of, write it down. Uh, and then give it a week or two and then reread those and see what patterns you can spot. What, what do they have in common? You can do brief like daily check-ins. Um, I really like journaling and then, but no, I, sometimes I'm busy. I can't really write like pages of introspection every day because you know, I have a life. And so I will do these very quick check-ins which is like, what did I do well today? What, uh, what could I do better? And then just like one or two sentences is like, what was the lesson I learned from my mistakes today? And one sentence um, just to give like a nice motivating message to myself. That takes about five minutes. So that can be very useful. And then another thing that you can do is you can use your journal to clarify what I was talking about intentions there. Uh, to connect picking to your values and to really embody like how you can be a better person and why if you stop picking. And you can also write entries. Um, this is a technique that I've been using for a while, but it's really hard to digest in, in one sentence, but you can call it like letters from the future in a way. Write uh, journal entries as if you already ditched picking, as if you already outgrew picking. And then write about what your everyday life is like when you don't pick, like let's say you're free of picking for two years. How do you deal with stress? What do you do two years from now when you're not picking? What do you do when triggering situations come up? I know this may sound like a wacky approach, but having this alternative reality journal can actually give you some very practical solutions for 
for your everyday life, but also it will give you a clearer picture of what kind of a person you need to become. As you've seen from that example from my client and the trauma, uh, resolving picking frequently means, and the, the, and the example with my client's career, that means kind of restructuring a part of how we see ourselves. So journal can help you clarify that part as well. I suggest that you email me and then I will, I can send you some more suggestions because I have about two dozen of them to the point that they're like swarming in my head now and I don't know which one uh, to choose. I cannot see the questions, where are they? Um, I don't, so when I answer a question, I don't mark it as answered. So to make it visible because some people uh, sign the questions with their names and I want to keep it confidential. So that's why you can not see the, the questions. Uh, did you say the woman got flashbacks about her trauma because she was overtired and had a low level anxiety? Well, she didn't, I don't know if I mentioned the anxiety, but she was tired. It, there is just like a general tendency that when we're physically tired and mentally exhausted, that our defense mechanisms don't work as well as they would work when we're, when we're rested. So if you try to keep bad memories at bay, like locked up in this corner of your psyche, uh, they're more likely to slip out unnoticed when you're tired. The same way that people tend to pick when they're tired rather than when they're well rested, because simply you have less self-control. So that's why when she would start to meditate um, when she was tired, those memories would come flooding back uh, more frequently. It wasn't tiredness that would trigger them. Being tired was just, um, just kind of a risk factor it facilitated the memories from coming up again. Uh, please check the promo code, it's not working for me. So it should be ProWeb100. Um, can you please also send me an email? I will ask our tech support if they change something. Usually they, if they, when they were changing the promo codes last time, because before that there was a smaller discount, uh, they notified me, uh, but they didn't say anything now. So please email me if, if someone else has a problem with this. I will email them right after the webinar and have that cleared up. Um, how long per day should you meditate? Well, this is this is a difficult question. So there we have quite literally thousands and maybe tens of thousands of studies that show all kinds of effects of meditation. And none of these studies actually successfully quantify how much we need to meditate. I would give you like a rough advice about 20 minutes per day. However, you don't have to start with 20 minutes per day because for some people, uh, this might be too much. Uh, so start where you with how much you can. If you can do five minutes, do five minutes. Uh, what I usually, when I, so not in the program, but when I teach meditation, in, you know, separately from psychotherapy, I tell people to just, uh, I give them a simple exercise, like focus on your breath. And I tell them, take your phone, turn on the stopwatch, sit and meditate for as long as you can. And then when you feel like you cannot possibly meditate anymore, open your eyes and just look at the time and make that your starting time plus one minute. And then every week increase by two or three minutes. Uh, if you work your way up to 20 minutes, that's perfectly fine. And tw with 20 minutes per day, you should be okay. You don't really have to go more than that. Uh, personally, I meditate for 45 minutes in one sitting, but this is my decision. And I don't think it gives any significant benefits when compared to 20 minutes. I just like to meditate, so I just do it. Uh, but 20 minutes should be fine. Uh, for example, uh, I've seen in, in literature, although that was specifically Tibetan Buddhist literature, that they recommend some say 20 minutes, some say 17 minutes, which is oddly precise, but kind of close enough to 20 minutes. So that, that, is, that seems to be the most frequently recommended length of one sitting. And a lot of the studies, um, especially the ones, the famous ones that show that meditation can increase the thickness of your frontal cortex or prefrontal cortex, those studies were tested with about 20, 20 minutes of daily meditation for at least two months. So count on 20 minutes. Uh, how can I find a therapist for skin picking? Well, 
if you go to skimpic.com, we're here. But if you don't want to use our program, um, depends on where you are. Um, I know some therapists uh, in the US and in Europe who can maybe work with you. I can recommend some of them. Um, you don't have to look for a specialist. If any therapist should be able to help, even though I know, I know in reality it doesn't quite happen. But if you can find a therapist that has that specializes in anxiety disorders, they should be able to teach you quite a few coping strategies that could be useful. So either do the, our program or um, email me and tell me where you are and then I will happily give you a recommendation if I know someone nearby that treats skin picking. We should really make a direct directory of therapists who treat skin picking somewhere. Uh, for skin pick program, how long does it take to complete? Uh, that's a question that's really different for, for everyone. Uh, on average, our clients stay in the program about three to four months. Um, so that's the, that's the average time. We have clients who stay two months. We have clients who stay a year. So it really depends. But let's say at some reasonable pace, three to four months, and you should be fine. You, even if you stop after that, if you've been participating regularly and going through the sessions, you should have a good collection of coping skills. Uh, to work with. If you want to learn more about SkinPick next week, I think, or in two weeks, uh, there will be like a short webinar where, where I will explain um, how skin picking works. So you can join, it takes about 20 minutes. And I will explain how the whole process works, what skills you learn, you know, what you don't learn, what theories we use, what types of therapies, all the, all the details. Why on earth would you choose to sit with uncomfortable emotions for 45 minutes? Oh, that refers to my meditation sessions. Um, well, with years, it gets easier. So I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't have an aversion to my intense emotions any anymore. I mean, maybe when I was starting, there were times when it was really difficult and very intense. But I'm the kind of person that when I see an obstacle. I don't run away because I just, I don't know, I feel like if it's inside of me, I should be able to live with it. So I just kept pushing through, I don't know, say so like, I didn't, it took me a while to work up to that time. I took some retreats where you meditate even more. And on each and every one of those retreats, I thought I was going to go crazy. I never did go crazy. And then at some point, it kind of settles that half of the burden of difficult emotions is something that we impose on ourselves. It's more our fear of them. Emotions just come and go. They don't quite disturb me. And for some reason, they, meditation increases your capacity to be with those emotions. So they really don't feel as catastrophic as they, as they used to feel before. Like it's been a while, I've been meditating for well over a decade. So it's hard to, to think back, but I remember when I started meditating, I had a feeling that my emotions are becoming more intense. Like I remember distinctly in high school watching movies and never being, you know, I liked movies, but I was never the one to cry watching movies. And then I started meditating and suddenly like I could feel, it's like I see a stray cat and then I become sad. I, it, I started kind of feeling much more intensely, but strangely that intensity didn't bother me I was kind of even able to appreciate it. I felt like it made me a better person in a way. Uh, let me see if we can maybe answer one or two more questions. Um, did you say collate page, pa patches? No, I said colloid patches, C-O-L-L-O-I-D or hydrocolloid patches. Uh, so they're, they help you, like you have acne, they might help your skin heal a little faster. They might dry up the acne, but the, their main advantage is that they're really hard to get off once you put them. So they create a barrier and then you allow your skin to heal and you can't pick at them. Uh, someone mentioned NAC, what other supplements would you recommend? Um, so there's not, we don't have that much research um, and the stuff that we do have does, shows kind of incoherent uh, results or not nothing particularly big. Maybe you can consider supplements that will help your skin heal faster because that we know 
um, if you create like a good skincare routine, have like a gentle cream. Um, in, in one of the previous webinars, we talked about how to keep your skin from being infected by picking. So you might want to check that one out. I think I meant, recommended some stuff there as well. Like there are simple things you can do, like just taking vitamin C. It's a, almost a banal thing that you can get anywhere. And vitamin C helps with collagen synthesis and collagen is essential for your skin to heal. Uh, so that is something that can help you out. So consider that as well. Um, I think this is uh, this is an okay place to stop. If you have any questions, because there are some questions that I didn't get to, uh, please email them to me and I will respond on Thursday. I've set aside a couple of hours, so I will answer all of your emails then. Um, next month, we'll talk about self-compassion and self-worth and skin picking. Um, I'll see and maybe prepare some practical like guided meditations for you so that you can download them and take them with you. Why not? Um, thank you very much for, for being here this evening and um, see you next month.